for Direction with Pastor Errol Daniel, sponsored by the Streams of Power Ministries in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Thank you very much for joining us on today's Direction, which comes to you from the Streams of Power Ministries here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We want to take this opportunity to extend very special Mother's Day greetings to all of you wonderful mothers in our audience today. We trust that you'll have a very wonderful and relaxing day. The scripture says a woman who fears the Lord should be praised. May God continue to bless you richly and do continue to be the praying mothers that you are. I can remember as a child at my grandmother's house. Mama is what we call her. And I can remember on Sunday mornings if you were in Mama's house, you had to get up for Sunday morning prayer. But aren't you glad for praying, Mamas? Ain't, ain't nothing like a mama. And your mama may be gone today, but the prayers that she prayed for you, they still cover you. And today we want to remember how mama used to pray for us. Come on, choir, help me say it.
indeed. Thank God for praying mothers again. A very blessed happy Mother's Day to all of you wonderful mothers in our direction audience. In Nehemiah 2.18, we are told, And they said, Let us arise and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. Over the past couple of months, the Streams of Power Ministries in St. Vincent and the Grenadines has been involved in some good work, building a church on the island of Bekwe. The Lord has seen this project to completion, and now, we want you to join us in the official dedication and celebration of the Beckway Streams of Power Church. Sunday the 19th of May 2019 from 10 a.m. at the new church building in Paget Farm. Come and join Pastor and Sister D, members of the Streams of Power Ministries, partners, supporters, friends and well-wishers as we celebrate what the Lord has done under the theme Plenteous Harvest. Indeed, the harvest is plenteous and there is a call for laborers. So join us on Sunday, May 19th, 2019 from 10 in the morning at the new Streams of Power Church building, Paget Farm Beckway, for the official celebration and dedication service. Look what the Lord has done. Come on and praise Him. Oh, look what the Lord has from now we'll be rejoicing with the brethren down in Bequay because on the 19th we've announced that we'll dedicate that church building to the glory and praise of God um, the harvest is still plenteous plenty plenty people I know to, to use another word, but there are plenty, plenty people still are lost. A whole lot of people still they're lost. And it is not God's will, thank you. It is not God's will for them to be lost. It's the will of God for everyone to be saved. There's a, a verse in the book of Psalm, Psalm 4 to be exact. If you will turn to it, Psalm 4. And we're going to look at that verse for a brief moment. Psalm 4, just one verse. I want to make a statement from it. Psalm 4. It says, But know that, that's verse 3, But know that the Lord hath set apart, set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Read that verse with me, please. But. Another time. old song, I don't think it's in, with the redemption song book. But I am certain it is in the melodies of praise. It says, now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for all Eternity. I don't know if you've ever heard that song. Song, or if you ever sang it for yourself. These days, we're moving away from real gospel songs. 
to some others. Just like we are moving away from the solid biblical teaching. And we are somehow catering for people who have itching ears. I am not going to follow. This psalm, this verse says, But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. For himself. The Lord has done that. If you are godly, you are set apart for God's purpose, for God's use. Thank you, sisters. Fine song service in my estimation. Thank you, congregation, for joining with them and singing lustily. But we're looking at the world now. And why am I not in any hurry? Because this not only needs to be taught, it needs to be understood, it needs to be practiced. I don't belong to this congregation. I belong to God. I serve this congregation, but I serve other congregations. All a lot of people want these days is to say, I belong to this assembly and the other assembly. And we're getting so wicked in the pulpit and in the church in general. That there are some leaders who don't care who they pull out of different denominations, different churches for themselves. So they would offer Brother Edwards, I'm glad he's rooted, a certain amount of money to come. They may offer Brother Rogers and even Ian or even Hinson or Livingston. I don't say you all can't go and do things otherwise, you know. But even in the churches, we're very wicked these days. Some of us who can make the biggest offer. I'm getting at something. You come and I'll pay you. It's like, you know, we were just dealing with the resurrection and I didn't get into that part. But so much wickedness was there in the sense that Jesus rose. They knew he rose from the dead. But the hierarchy said that we will pay you to say that while we were asleep, his disciples came and stole him. There was money at the betrayal of Jesus. What is the price? You call it and you get it. 30 pieces of silver. Done deal. I'll identify him. So later on he walked up to the one that he was saying he loved and kissed him. Hail master. Some people don't care who they deprive. I hope you're not in this congregation where you would be that wicked to deprive a man of his wife, a woman of her husband, to deprive children of their parents because of selfishness. We play, we pay that is people to play. We pay people to act. But God has set apart him that is godly for himself. You fellowship in this church, but you do not belong to me. I don't belong to you. I'm here as God's minister. To serve his purpose. And I'm glad for the love that you show to me. But if you don't love me, I really don't care. Amen. Amen. 
Whether you shake your head from the left to the right or the right to the left, that's not my problem. God has set apart him that is godly for himself. Walking into this church doesn't make you a Christian. Somebody illustrated that a long time before me. Just like walking into a garage doesn't make you a motor car. To be a Christian, you must accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. My days might be many or few. And I am not dread, I, I am not dread in the bad sense. But I want to declare the word of the Lord until I can do it no more. I don't know who would be the last one that will stand in this congregation. But when you stand, do stand up for Jesus. And if you fall, fall for righteousness. So I'm going to move away from this now. Couldn't help it. I just sent to get this scripture. It was in my spirit, but I did not remember where the text is. You have seen it for yourself. Um, how many verses? We have eight verses here. It begins this way. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me. When I was in distress, have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. Oh, you sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing? And verse 3, know thou that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself, the Lord will hear when I call. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifice of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon me. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that the corn and the wine increase. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep for the Lord only makes me to dwell in safety. There's a man from another denomination in Beckway who said, Pastor D, leave the painting for me. I'll do the painting. The paint was already given, but he said, I'll do the painting. And you know what he did? I don't know how many sons he has. But he sent one of his sons, and we're so pleased with the kind of paint work that the man is doing on the inside of the building. But hear this about, hear this about him. Hear this about him. <laughs> you have to sign to him. And I am not the best sign. I asked her today. Sometimes she's trying to tell me something by making sign. Eh? What do you say? What do you mean? I don't understand signs so very good. But there are others who understand, and they would say to him, in making the sign. And he would do so. Means he got it. He's finished painting on the inside of the building. By the way, if you don't know, it's an upstairs and downstairs. 
If that had been here, we'll have more room to do other things, but so let it be. And one of the brothers said to me, Pastor D, are we going to be tiling the church? I said, if you all want to, you can go ahead. But um, what it takes to do it now, we don't have. This church was built in 1965, there about. But it remained for years without a tile on the floor. And that is why I don't want you all to damage anything for the sake of damaging. The chairs you sit on, they're very expensive. Don't tell me you can sit where you want and you could treat the, the, the furniture anyhow. That is wickedness. Hear it from me, that's wickedness. You take care of yourself and you take care of God's property. So I said, if you all can, go right ahead. But we are not able to do that now. So the gentleman said, well, what about painting the floor? I said, go ahead, if you want to paint it. That's another man from the one who said, we'll paint all of the walls. So later today, I believe they will start painting the floor until you could tile it if Jesus doesn't come before. It makes my heart glad. It makes me glad when you from this congregation would say, I want to do something for somebody else. I was asked um, by a certain person, what is the theme for the dedication? And I said, I really didn't think about that. But that night I went to bed and I got up, Lord, what, what can we say? And a portion of scripture came to me, said Jesus to his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. If I say, aha, I got it. The theme would be plenteous harvest. Plenteous harvest. On the 50th anniversary of Streams of Power, we had from strength to strength. Plenteous harvest. Everywhere you look, in Beckway, as well as on the mainland, you know that the harvest is ripe. Ripe. It's ripe. Children are to be brought into the kingdom of God. They find themselves in places because of the parents that they have. Taking them everywhere. And if life lasts, it's only a matter of time. And these children would become breakaways. The harvest is ripe. Sunday school is important. Whether it's for an hour or less than an hour, taking the children and helping them to become godly is very important. Amen. Brother Vonley and I, we were sitting together. He got two of his uncles who were not Christians to come down and help yesterday. And when we were going down, I said, Brother Vonley, I know that that woman is going to the beach. But she should wait until she gets to the beach to dress the way that she's dressed. What do you think? You see, I was looking myself. So I said, I'm going to talk to her. And she was a fine-spirited young woman. You know, some of them would say, that's not your business. Soul winning is my business. And I said to Brother Von Lee, because when we were finished, she said, I'm not so bold. I said, I'm not even as bold as Sister D. 
But she was a very nice young lady. She was in company, not living here in St. Vincent at this time. And um, I said, you look, your face is so attractive, but your body needs to be covered some more. And she said, I know that, you know, but I have some covering when I'm finished at the beach. So I said, cover up before you go there. She listened, and we end up praying with her and asking her to receive Christ as Savior. The harvest is plenteous. Now, I know that others would have cut my head off. Some others. What if Jesus and Billy Graham in his archive messages, he did such a fantastic job. All I am sorry about is that as nobody was at port to say, now that you have heard what Billy Graham said, what would you like to do? Would you like to receive Christ as your Savior? But nobody was at port at that moment. So the message was just cut. It depends upon how we line up things. Pastor D, this is carnival time. A lot of people would leave time for eternity before carnival. And so we're begging people to surrender to Jesus now. Be set apart for God's use, for God's purpose. Be set apart. What if Billy Graham didn't? Well, not what if Jesus is from the message that is from John 4. What if Jesus didn't take time to ask the woman of Samaria for a drink of water? What if he had left her to just drink that water that she drank over and over and over again? What if? But Jesus saw her and knew that she needed living water. Every man without God is lost. Whether he has on jacket and tie like myself or ordinary clothing, every man or every person without Christ is lost. And Christ Jesus came into this world to save the lost. He came to do that. What if somebody didn't tell me about Christ? I was a teenager at that time. What, I wonder what might have become of me. What if they told me and I didn't listen to them? I wonder where I might have been. Perhaps in the grave or doing jail sentence. You know, for years. What if somebody loved me enough to have told me about Jesus and to encourage me to accept him? Somebody told you about Jesus. And so here you are today in the house of the Lord. Not to serve the pastor, but to serve Jesus. Those of you who are listening and you make your comments, I've seen some of them. But oh, my heart's prayer, my heart's desire, and I'm using the words of Paul. Reverend, my heart's desire and pray to God for my countrymen, Israelis, that they might be saved. It's in Romans 10. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. 
For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to righteousness. Do you know that we have more religious people in St. Vincent than righteous people? You don't know it. So Pastor Dewey is a statistic. Who tell you so? Just look at lifestyle. By their fruits you shall know them. So, still in that chapter, I'm quoting, you can go this, Romans 10. They have a zeal of God, but not according to righteousness. For they are ignorant of God's righteousness, and they're going about establishing their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. And in verses 9 and 10, he says something like this. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, not the head, with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. The heart. Not the head. I quote again. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth. Confession. Is made. Unto. Salvation. Later on in the same chapter. He speaks about. No difference between the Jew. And the Greek. No difference. No difference. We sit here today and you can sit any place you want. Except if we reserve, you know, certain seats for certain ones. Then you know you're disciplined people. You're not going to say I'm going to sit here anyway. That stubbornness, that rebelliousness, and ball right down to ungodliness. Reserve. And by the way, I could say something on that. Set apart for himself. When God reserves you for himself, you don't have any right to make anybody make football out of you. Because when you are set apart, it's like you are reserved for God's purpose. These seats are reserved for such and such. And you would see the sign. Sometimes ushers would help you. You're set apart. You're reserved for the purpose of God. You're not a, a football that the players would kick here, there, and everywhere. No. You have anchored your soul. Anchored, I say, in the haven of rest. And you've got to say it. I will sail the wild seas, no more. I sailed it before, but no more. I'll sail the wild seas, no more. There comes a time when we have to say, no more. The tempest may sweep. Or the wild stormy deep. Hear, hear something. Lord, thank you. In Jesus, I'm safe evermore in Jesus. I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. So there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. The same Lord over all is rich unto all. Boy, hear, hear words. The same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And this message must be taught. Because some questions are asked. I didn't open the book to the page. But some questions are asked. About how shall they preach. Except they be sent. How shall they hear without a preacher. And <laughs> there would also be little preachers. And perhaps some of us need to be littled. 
But you go to Ecclesiastes and uh, it said uh, because the preacher was wise. The preacher set in order certain things and tell the people that the conclusion of the whole matter. I don't want to call your name there, brother. God bless you. The, the conclusion of the whole matter is not to get a position in church or in this world where people would salute you. The conclusion of the whole matter is to fear God. Because this is the whole duty of man. Ecclesiastes 12. The whole duty of man is to fear God and to keep his commandments. For God shall bring into judgment everything, secret thing, whether it be good or evil. I can't change that. So I have to be very careful with my own life and I ask you to be careful. For God shall do that. The preacher. Back in Romans it is written. How beautiful. Well first of all, how shall they preach except the resent? And any time a preacher changes the word of God, he's not representing God. He's representing himself. Say amen. amen. Whenever I do, if ever I do, I cannot say God has said. I said, I say. But it doesn't matter what I say when God has said. Let God be true. And every man a liar. So, it is written in Romans 10, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach glad tidings of good things. And I think verse 17 says, so then, are you in that book? I'm not there. So then, Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing the word of God. I don't want to deprive anybody of the word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing the word of God. Some would hear and would not believe. And all I can do is just pray for them. Some of us in the church will hear and will do what God says and others will not. Jesus faced that. He wept. He said, oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem, my own people. How oft? Would I gather you together as a hen that gather her chickens under her wings? But you would not. Some people are good to imitate others, imitate that is, and to imitate animals. Some people could sound just like a hen. It's true, you know. The people in this congregation could act as though they were born and live in Barbados. Some would talk as though they are Yankees. Maybe went there for one week or a month and by the time you return, you are a Yankee. I'm not bashing you. But people who have that kind of a talent, you know, to speak like others. I applaud them. I really do. I'm not bashing. It's a talent. I was in one of the countries, I try to remember, where, and Pastor Joseph, we were together. 
and our own Dennis called and he was talking to me. And then he said, let me talk to Pastor Joseph. So he changed up his voice and started to sound like a Barbadian, that we say Bajan. He said, I heard you and I see you. But he was talking like a Bajan. So said, my brother, it's good to know that you hear me and see me all the way in Barbados. <laughs> and, you know, but up to now he didn't reveal himself. But it's, Dennis has that kind of a thing. Ability to talk that way. Not me. Um, some foreigners come here, like further up in North America. And they like to speak as Vinci's or more so Jamaicans. And some of them believe anyway that all of us are Jamaicans. But you know that when a Jamaican speak, you know that that is not a Trinidadian. Are you able to differentiate? You know that certain parts of this country, when you hear certain ones speak, you know where they are from. Not so? Hello, not so? In this small country, you know where they're from. Is it so in Barbados that people live in Bridgetown areas speak a different way from those who live way down in uh, St. Lucie and those places? I want to say further to you today that you're godly you're set apart to the glory of God. You're set apart for God's purpose. You've got to know that. And don't be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed of it. We have cameras in this church. And sometimes, accidentally, Sometimes, accidentally, a picture might be taken but should not have been taken. Sometimes. When God looks down, he takes picture of us. How could you say that? Well, if you didn't believe long time, you better believe now. What does the law say, minister, concerning taking of pictures? If you don't know the answer to that, fine. What I'm trying to say, almost every building in Kingston has cameras. When a couple of years ago, that wasn't so, then people did certain things and they were not caught. But no, closed circuit cameras are set up. That is how they have caught different ones because the camera captures you. Somebody said of late, I don't like to go to streams of power church. They have on cameras. This camera is to capture you worshiping God. Hello. The camera would show every seat that is not occupied if they're not smart enough to avoid those seats. The camera would show everyone that is occupied and also your expressions because the service is supposed to enhance the kingdom of God. So, and they to take out monkey face. Meaning when people play the fool, you know what I mean? Sometimes you all take insult of everything. You would not like your picture to be taken out in an awkward condition. You should not want it. So sometimes I would even say to some of, depends upon where you sit, you need to go in a little further. And others, you know, will kind of say, but why is he doing that? I'm trying to protect you. And to protect your church so that God would get the glory. 
That's why I say sometimes, don't follow me. When I am going to share something, capture something else. Let me deal with that. And then come back. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. What does he behold? The good and the evil. That's in the Bible. That is telling me I have to be careful. Because when I joyfully sing, why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should I grow weary and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, follow me in my style, my constant friend is he. Is he, oh, his eye is on the sparrow. And I know, yes, I know, he watches me. You know I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Oh, 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 his eye is on the spot. Oh, no. Well, I sing, I sing because I'm so happy. I sing because I am free. I is on every little sparrow, and I know he was. We might take it and not um, again. I sing because I'm happy. He looks at me in my happiness, but he looks at me in my sadness also. Everywhere I go. You know, when was it? Was it in the 90s? A song was very popular that was from a distance. God is watching. I never sang that. Because God is not from a distance watching. God is right here, right now. Close up view. CCC is closed circuit camera. Not so, Rogers? Closed circuit camera. I think this is what they call it. Taking our pictures as we move. God is right here, right now. Close up. Beholding every movement. Listen to every word. Right here, right now. When I ask you not to carry on conversation in church, when the word of God is being taught, because sometimes they throw you off. So I beg you to change your seat. It's for your own good. He is not what one plaque says. A silent listener to every conversation. He's more than a silent listener because oftentimes when we're not saying the right thing, if you're in the spirit, God's spirit will say, stop it. Not so? Because the spirit of God brings conviction. So stop it. In conclusion today, I want to remind you how important you are to God. You are set apart. One of these days, the message of the formula 
of sanctification. It's a biblical word, it's a theological word, it's also practical, it's also doctrinal. The formula of sanctification. Sanctification in itself is to be set apart. But before sanctification, there is justification. You cannot be sanctified if you've not, never been justified. You cannot be sanctified before you are justified. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And um, you know, it brings with it a lot of things. Romans 5, quickly, just to set it up. Romans 5. I was quoting from Romans earlier, Acts Romans, chapter 5. When I'm turning my page, you know what to do and what not to do. Just to remind you. Romans chapter 5. And it says here, Therefore, in the light of what is written before chapter 5, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And what a blessing to know that we have peace with God. Do you have peace with God? Amen. Do you have peace with God? Amen. That means you can leave planet Earth right now because you have peace with God. We have peace with God. People might be giving us all kind of a trouble. I wanted a stronger word, but I disciplined myself not to use the word. But in spite of how people want to treat you, you can know you have peace with God. And peace is so important that Jesus said, you know what? In this world, you're going to have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In me, you have peace. In the world, you have tribulation. But in me, you have peace. Peace with God. People can make your life miserable if you allow them. But let them be the miserable ones. And you maintain peace with God. Peace with God. Because of justification. But it's when you come to know Christ as your Savior and Lord. You didn't have to pay a cent for your salvation. If you had to pay, it would have been so costly that it's only the rich would have been able to afford it. Some of you are labeled as the poorest in St. Vincent. And that's why they say that Daniel take the poor people money and build this and do the next and the other. I know what I'm saying, you know. Some of you are labeled as being poor. But in your state, don't accept it though. Don't accept it, you're rich. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. So don't accept it. I know you don't have a lot of money like some others. But you are not poor. You're very rich. Well, I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I'm rich. I'm rich. Hallelujah. You had a good night's rest, didn't you? 
You're able to sit up. That means you're healthy. Amen. Amen. I, wish, I wish above all things, brethren, that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Don't give people the impression that everything they have, you have to get it also. Don't let anybody buy you. I've said for years, let no one get into your heart by passing through your mouth. I've said it for years. Over and over again. Somebody may buy something for you, but don't let them buy you. How many of you are for sale? Raise your hands. Not for sale. I'm sold out. I said I'm sold out. Sold out for God. Highly favored by God and I'm sold out. You don't get in it. Highly favored and sold out. When you give me something, thank you, but you can't buy me. I'm sold out. So, justification, sanctification, and glorification. I'll tell you more about it by the grace of God some other time. But my time is up for today, and I want to thank you for being so patient. In Nehemiah 2.18, we are told, And they said, Let us arise and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. Over the past couple of months, the Streams of Power Ministries in St. Vincent and the Grenadines has been involved in some good work building a church on the island of Beckway. The Lord has seen this project to completion and now we want you to join us in the official dedication and celebration of the Beckway Streams of Power Church. Sunday the 19th of May 2019 from 10 a.m. at the new church building in Paget Farm. Come and join Pastor and Sister D, members of the Streams of Power Ministries, partners, supporters, friends, and well-wishers as we celebrate what the Lord has done under the theme, Plenteous Harvest. Indeed, the harvest is plenteous and there is a call for laborers. So join us on Sunday, May 19th, 2019 from 10 in the morning at the new Streams of Power Church building, Paget Farm Beckway, for the official celebration and dedication service. Look what the Lord has done. Come on and praise Him. Oh, look what the Lord has of time we have to stop there for today but I trust that the Word of God will have free course in your hearts if we can be a further help to you please get in touch with us and let us know you can write to us at direction PO box 443 St. Vincent West Indies you can also call us at 784-456-1636 or visit us online at streamsofpower.com we look forward to hearing from you so until next time, may God bless you richly.